Today I want to talk about something I'm super passionate about, which is having a life vision and the four roadblocks to having and living by a life vision. So if you've ever wanted to live with more purpose and clarity and direction in your day-to-day -day life, keep watching. First, a little bit about what I mean when I say life vision. It's not as intense or intimidating as it might sound. I don't know if it sounds intimidating. I'm used to the verbiage, but if you don't like life vision, you could say direction or clarity or purpose. It's all kind of the same. It's having a clearly defined goal or path or person that you are becoming day after day. And you know that the actions that you're taking are getting you closer there step after step. And you're not just kind of lost and wandering in this repetitive busyness. I'm hoping that we can have vision and purpose in our life because that's the way that God has called us to live. It says that my people perish for lack of vision. And he's a God that modeled for us what it looks like to have vision. When Jesus went to the cross, it said for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. We can endure so much when we have a vision and purpose ahead of us. The journey of walking in the promises, walking in the fullness of who he's created to be is a journey of life vision. And along the way, there are four roadblocks to getting there. The first roadblock is a lack of role models and mentors, people who are living this out for us to watch. So much more is caught than taught. And so when we don't have people around us to show us that this is possible, that you can be living with purpose and intention, a lot of times we don't, we just don't even think it's possible. We think that, you know, what we have right now is what we've seen our parents have or our friends have, and it's busyness, it's full calendars, but not a lot of purpose, or it's struggling with debt forever and ever. Dysfunctional family gatherings. There's so many times where we just need a picture. We need to see what it looks like in action. The amazing thing about the time that we're living in is that we can find those people pretty easily. We can find people that are living the way that we desire to be live to be living and we can ask questions, we can read their books, we can seek them out. Like now more than ever, we can be in closer proximity to people who inspire us than ever before. So if you are one of those people who you don't have it modeled for you, then maybe add some people virtually or seek people out in your church or your workplace that you see and you admire and you wanna become more like and ask some questions. Dig in and find people that you can start to model your life after and follow and be discipled by. The second roadblock is a fixed mindset. We're basically saying, this is what I've been given. I am not a person who has vision. I'm not very energetic. I, I don't have drive like that, or I'm impatient. That's just how I am. I'm just, I just burst out in anger. That's just who I am. I've always struggled with anxiety. I'm just an anxious person. All of these things that we equate to our identity that are not who we are. They're things, they're things we struggle with that we won't have to struggle with forever unless we believe we'll have to struggle with them forever. Having a growth mindset has been a buzzword. It's been all over lately, but really when you break it down, it's the gospel in a nutshell. It's believing that we can grow, that we can change, that we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we can become different people. It's truly believing that the limits that you have now are not going to be your limits forever, but that you can push through pain and come out on the other side with more tools, more knowledge, more capability to get through things than you did before. The third roadblock, it feeds into the fixed mindset, which is a scarcity mindset. This is an insidious belief that covers us with anxiety, it covers us with envy, it covers us with jealousy and greed. It's this belief that there are limited resources, that if somebody else has a win and somebody else is making money, somebody else is living in their purpose, somebody else is writing that book that we wanna write, taking that vacation we wanna take, then that means that there's less opportunity for us. Somehow their success makes it less possible for me to have the same success. 
Logically, it does not make sense. We know that it's not logical that somebody else making money means that we can't make money or somebody else having a healthy, happy family means that we can't have a healthy, happy family. If anything, we need to learn to flip the narrative. Instead of saying, wow, they're succeeding. I'm so jealous. Why isn't it happening to me? It's saying, wow, they're succeeding. That is a possibility for me. They're achieving something that I, that is my heart's desire. That means it's possible for me. That means that I can one day be like that. And I'm so excited and happy that they're living in that because when I live in that, I want people to be excited and happy for me too. If the God that is for you, the God that created you and has given you your life's purpose, completely owns everything. Why is he not going to give you the resources that you need to achieve your purpose on earth? Why is he not going to open up doors when you need the doors to open? He is so gracious and generous with us. We don't have to worry about a thing. Fourth thing that I see is probably the scariest of all, which is complacency. Complacency accepts the prisons that we've created for ourselves. It accepts the prisons of dysfunctional relationships. It accepts the prisons of negative thought patterns. It accepts the prisons of feeling busy and depleted and never having enough. And it says, this is what I deserve. Or it says, this is just what life is. I might as well accept it so that I don't have conflict inside. I'm going to eliminate the conflict I feel when I don't like what's happening in my life by eliminating my desire for anything different, which might seem like a good strategy in the moment. But after binge watching Netflix for a year of your life, you'll realize time is a limited resource and you're not going to get any of it back. And sitting in complacency and putting off what you know you need to do today to tomorrow, it's completely self-sabotage. You're either going to have pain today or pain tomorrow. I don't want you to get to a certain point in your life and go, oh my gosh, I've wasted so much time. Today is the day to snap out of complacency, to make the next right step, to have a life vision, to believe that it is possible for you. It's not just for somebody else, but it's for you. That you are created to do something incredible, that you are not here by accident, and you're not here just to pass the time. There's no better time than now to stop camping out at our roadblocks. So whatever stage you're at, it's okay. No judgment, but hope. Hope that it doesn't have to be like this forever. Hope that there is a turning point and that turning point could be right now, today. A year from now, you can be living with more intention and purpose and clarity and fulfillment than you ever dreamed possible. I'm ready, God, to become who I'm called to be. I'm ready to have a vision for my life, a purpose for my life, and to take courageous action every day towards who you're calling me to become. So where have you seen roadblocks in your life on your journey of becoming who you're called to be? And how did you overcome it? Make sure to write your answer in the comments. Subscribe if you like these types of videos. And also follow me on Instagram where we can continue the conversation.